Hello, welcome to the Keyence IX training module. Today we'll discuss how to wire your IX amplifier's discrete inputs and outputs and how to assign them in the software using the IX's IO cable, part number OP87906. You'll be able to assign up to 8 inputs to and 10 outputs from the sensor. We'll be discussing both the physical wiring and the software side of configuring this. Let's first take a look at our basic AX setup before we get into the IO. I have my IX82000 amplifier here, wired from the power terminal on the bottom of the amplifier to my 24 volt DC power supply. Please ensure whatever power supply you're using is rated to provide at least 0.8 amps of 24 volt DC power if you're using one amplifier, or at least 1.9 amps if you're using a main and an expansion amplifier. To wire to power, we recommend using 16 to 18 AWG wires. In the field, you should wire the amplifier's ground terminal to a frame ground as well. However, we've skipped this step for this demonstration. Now let's look at our ribbon cable, which is composed of eight input wires, 10 output wires, and two unused wires. You'll have to strip some insulation from these wires. I pre-stripped the two wires we'll be using today. By default, your bottom brown wire, terminal A1, is assigned as your external trigger or timing input. Your middle brown and red wires are assigned as normally open outputs. Brown or B1 is assigned to total status oak by default, and red or B2 is assigned as busy. This means the brown B1 wire will send a signal when the sensor determines an oak judgment apart, and the red B2 wire will send a signal when the sensor is in the middle of determining its judgment. The full I.O. cable mapping is on screen here for reference. Please note that for your outputs, all of the default values can be changed. Your inputs can also be changed, except for your brown wire, which will always be your dedicated external trigger input. Now let's get to the actual wiring. We'll start by wiring one input to trigger the sensor. First, let's look at our wiring diagram. You'll see the way we wire our input will depend on if we select PMP or NPN for the sensor's polarity. This is done through the software and advanced settings under the NPN slash PNP tab. In this video, inputs and outputs will be wired in PNP style, which is most common in America. You'll see on our wiring diagram, the sensor on the left is wired to the 24V and 0VR power supply. This element represents our input device, which could be a PLC, photo A, push button, or any device capable of sending a discrete signal. For this demonstration, we'll use a push button to show how this works. You'll see we have to wire our push button to the 24 volt terminal of the power supply that's powering the AX and to the input wire we'd like to use. We'll be using input one, our bottom brown wire, to establish an external trigger. So I'll first wire my brown input one to my push button's positive wire. I've done this by tying the two wires together, but in the field it's most common to use something like a screw terminal. Next, we'll wire the negative wire of the push button to the 24 volt terminal of the power supply. We've now successfully completed the hardware setup of our input circuit. Now let's wire our output. You'll see in these wiring diagrams polarity also matters for our outputs. Again, we'll be wiring everything PNP for this demonstration. Wherever you send your output is referred to as your load in the wiring diagram. It will have to connect to your output wire and the zero volt terminal of your power supply. Typically, you'll wire your output signal to a PLC, stack light, alarm, or any device that can accept a discrete signal. For this demonstration, we'll wire our output to a light, which will serve as our load. We'll first connect our brown output one wire from the I.O. cable to the positive wire of the light. Next, we'll wire the light's negative wire to the zero volt of our power supply. That completes the hardware and wiring setup for our input and output. Let's hop into the software and see how this works. Once you're connected to your sensor, you'll want to set up a program with tools. For information on steps 1 and 2, please refer to the Master Registration and Detection Setup video. For information on step 3, please refer to the individual tool videos. For our discrete inputs and outputs, we'll want to make sure we have one option in step 1 selected. Under Trigger Options, you must select External Trigger for the IX to accept a discrete trigger signal. This is all we have to set for our input. I've already set up my master image in my tools, so next we'll go through to step 4 where we'll assign our outputs. In step 4, you'll see you have the option to assign up to 10 total outputs, which would require using every output wire available on the ribbon cable. You'll also see that by default output 1 is set for total status OK, and output 2 is set for busy. If you click the first output drop-down, you can change the condition that will cause that output to turn on. 
You'll see you have several options for your output conditions. Selecting off will prevent the output from ever turning on. Selecting total status will turn the output on when the judgment is either OK or NG, depending on which you choose. Selecting the run output will turn the output on when the camera is in run mode. Selecting busy will turn the output on when the IX is busy or in the middle of processing. Error will output a signal when the sensor is in an error state. Alarm will output a signal when the sensor gets an alarm reading. The other options are all tools or logic, which will turn on the output when a specified tool or logic condition is OK or NG. For example, I can change my output 1 to tool 1. Now it will only turn on if tool 1 determines an OK judgment. In the second dropdown, you have the option to pick between OK and no good. With certain tools, like our height tool here, you'll also have the option to select high and low. Picking high means the output will only turn on if the measurement is higher than the set thresholds. Picking low means the output will only turn on if the measurement is lower than the set thresholds. By selecting NG, the output will turn on when the tool gives any no good reading. For now, I'll set my output one to total status OK, because I want to send a signal to turn my light on when a part is good. In the extended functions, you have several options. First, you can set your total status conditions, which determine what conditions will turn on the total status output. By default, this is set to all tools OK, meaning all the tools in a program must have an OK reading for the sensor to give an OK judgment. Selecting any tool OK will turn on the total status OK output as long as at least one tool determines an OK reading. You can also select a logic for your total status condition, which means the total status will only be deemed OK if the selected logic conditions have been met. We'll discuss logic further in a moment. You also have options for trigger error and zero offset error. Enabling these means the error output will turn on in the event of a trigger or zero offset error. With these options disabled, the error output will not turn on if there is a trigger or zero offset error. By clicking change on the zero offset tools option, you can adjust which tools will be affected by a batch zero offset, a function that zeroes the readings on all tools. By turning off tool 1, that tool would not be affected by a batch zero offset. You can also set your analog output here. For more details on this, please view the dedicated video for analog output. In the next extended functions screen, you can set your logic. This can be a helpful feature when dealing with more complex applications. For more information, please see the dedicated video for the IX's logic function. For now, that's all the settings we have to set in the software. So let's jump back out of the software and see how this works. Now we'll demonstrate sending the IX a discrete input to trigger the sensor and watch it send a discrete output to turn on our light. I'll click this push button to trigger the IX and you'll see the laser activate to take its measurement. This is an OK part, so our light turns on. Now I'll move our part so that it's in a no good condition. When I push our button and trigger the sensor, you can see no signal is sent so our light stays off. Thank you for watching.